Hey guys, so I just got back from seeing 13 hours the secret soldiers of Benghazi. That's a mouthful. Um, I, uh, this is a, I know a few days late. Uh, I've noticed it's been out for a few days now. Uh, I didn't get around to the theater until today to go see it for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one, the weather is fucking crappy out right now. It's like really cold. Uh, two, I've had uh, to work and also some family emergencies have popped up and I haven't been able to go. Um, and this is one of those times where, you know, I've had a lot of stuff going on uh, lately in my life. Uh, some not so great things. And uh, I was I was kind of wanting to escape from the reality for two and a half hours. And even if that escape was fucking a Michael Bay Benghazi movie. Um, this is a movie that I was w intrigued about a little. Um, because it's a movie about Benghazi, which is very tricky because, you know, it could go all political and everything else and, you know... Of all the, it's you know it's a very hot button topic still to this day, unfortunately because of Republicans, um, and I was like, okay, I'm interested. I'm more interested in them actually making a movie about Benghazi and seeing how this goes. What worried me though is probably a lot of people did it, it, it did to a lot of people that is being directed by Michael Bay. Um, I was. You know, cracking up everybody talking about how how this was gonna be the true story of what happened to in Benghazi and finally reveal what happened over there. And I'm like, you do realize this is from the director that made Pearl Harbor too, right? Everybody would make that argument. I'd be like, he made Pearl Harbor. That movie wasn't very accurate, historically accurate. So I, I was worried. Like, and Michael Bay just being fucking Michael Bay. And that he's not made a good movie in, like, years. I don't know, I did like Pain and Gain. Uh, because that was a little bit different than what he usually does. Um, even though that wasn't historically accurate either, as I found out. I, even though that was based off a true story, too. Um, yeah, I, like, I was, like, was kind of worried about this. And, you know what? This movie isn't that bad. It isn't. Actually, it's pretty decent. And it's honestly Michael Bay's best film in, like, years. Uh, definitely is. Way better than, like, something like Pain and Gain. Way fucking better than Transformers or any of this shit. Um, it has its problems. But, uh, I think the good outweighs the bad, in my opinion. <laughs> um, this movie is really well acted, honestly. It, 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 there wasn't really one bad performance in this film, it wasn't like we're in Transformers where you have like really stupid comedic relief characters like the mom and dad of Transformers that are so fucking out of place and ruined the goddamn movie. Or you have people acting like Shia LaBeouf does in those movies. He um, don't have really obnoxious characters like you have in a lot of Michael Bay movies. This movie had a lot of really good characters. Um... Mainly, uh, John Krasinski is the main focus of this movie, and I, I have no problem with that whatsoever. Uh, John Krasinski is a pretty good actor, and he shows his acting chops in this movie. He has, you know, he's pretty believable in the emotional scenes that he's in, uh, where he's your stereotypical uh, soldier who has a family back home, he's about to have another baby. I was like, well, fuck, he's dead. <laughs> it's like, that's instantly, like... But he apparently he, he lived. I thought at first, I was like, well, just from movie tropes alone, this guy's dead. Uh, he has a family. He has a perfect life. He has you know, stuff to look forward to when he gets back home. Usually that means a character's dead. But no, um, I kind of like that his... Spoiler alert, his character doesn't die. Um, he, like... He's, uh, I mean, he's based off a real guy. Like, I didn't know, you know, whether he did or lived or not, uh, before I saw the movie. Um, this, uh, real-life counterpart. 
But yeah, I like I like uh, John John Krasinski's acting is pretty damn solid in this movie, and pretty much everybody else is pretty solid acting, even though really a lot of these characters are interchangeable. Um, that's one complaint I'll just get into right now. It's like I swear towards the end of the movie when people are dying, I'm like, uh, I I thought it was, and then like. Some survived. I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that guy died, but then he ended up still surviving. But another person died, and I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, who died? Who? What was that character? There was too many. It's one of those problems of that you have with a lot of these movies, war movies, and stuff like that, where you have a lot of interchangeable characters, and you can't always keep track on who's who. And you know, it, character development is very is lost on a lot of them. Um, unfortunately, um, like I said, John Krasinski is really the main focus and that, that guy who plays the lead CIA guy, who's, it's, that's the only other, well, there's a couple actually, uh, actors I've known or recognized, hold on one second, I'm looking them up, um, that makes any sense, give me one second here, I just looked at my phone, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, David Denman from, which is even funny, uh, he played Roy on The Office, is in this movie as one of the soldiers. That was kind of cool. I, I didn't recognize him until uh, like halfway through the movie. That that was David Denman. And I was like, oh shit, Roy from The Office and Jim from The Office are in a Benghazi movie. That's pretty fucking hilarious. Um, that was a, that was uh, who was the lead? Uh, damn it. That's not him. That's not him. Where, where the hell was the... Show me one second. It's going to drive me nuts now. Uh... Oh, David Costable. Uh, I, he's an actor I've seen a million times before. He's the CIA chief. Um, who, honestly, if you were to take one thing away from this movie, I... I guess Michael Bay does not like the CIA <laughs> um, because they don't really shine them on a very good light in this movie at all. If I were the CIA, I would be kind of pissed. Apparently, they kind of are. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, they, he is—he basically tells them not to do anything half the goddamn time, and you know they want to go out there and save these people, and he's like, no, and he's. You know, in charge here and everything else, and these they're stereotypical CIA chief, but he's one of those guys I've seen in a million movies before, and he was fine. Um, he is your stereotypical character you see in a lot of war movies, like that tells him to stand down and whatever. Um, but the one thing I will say about this movie that made it really good was the action set pieces. I give shit to Michael Bay all the goddamn time, and I think everybody should. It's it, there, There's a good reason behind that. Uh, but the action set pieces, he should get a lot of credit for this movie. He made some really goddamn intense action set pieces. The action set pieces are really intense. Not as intense like as Revenant was, but it's pretty, you know... I was kind of on the edge of my fucking seat a couple of, I hate using that cliche, but I was. Um, it, I kind of was just like sitting there like, oh god, what the hell is going to happen? Like, I was interested in what was going to happen to these characters. Um, because I don't, you know, I didn't know, I know the basics of what happened in Benghazi, but I, you know, I don't know everything about it. So I'm like, the particular, the scene at the very end where they're having a standoff they're trying to protect the CIA secret CIA base and like a bunch of uh, Muslim or uh, Arabic uh, Libyan soldiers or Lib Libyan uh, rebels keep coming and attacking them and they're like a lot of scenes where they're just sitting there waiting like they have they can't figure out this is something I really liked in that, like, I know this is going to sound racist, but I'm not... And this is something I'm sure, if you're in the military, this has got to be true. Um, they explain throughout the whole movie that, honestly, you cannot... As, when you're in Libya, any other country, Iraq, Iran, and all that stuff like that, or Afghanistan, 
it's very hard. I'm so they mentioned that it's very hard to tell the good guys from the bad guys because they all look the goddamn same. And I'm sure that is pretty much damn accurate. And they mentioned that throughout the whole movie, and that's a running theme throughout the whole movie because, like, there are a lot of tense moments where you can't tell if the guy coming towards them is a good guy or a bad guy. It you know it's very iffy, and like you kind of like confused as much as the characters are, and it's kind of, it makes it really good and really intense to watch. Um, those scenes are really good. It's, like I said, particularly those scenes where. They're trying to protect the CIA base at the very end. Uh, were really good, um, and they're scoping out these guys, and they're trying to figure out whether they're friendlies or not. And they can't really tell or not. And they they keep saying, "Well, we can't shoot them until they start firing at us." And you know, it's like, it, but they keep coming closer and closer, and look more suspicious as they come along. You know, it's interesting. I like that. Those scenes were really good. Um, I, that, there's many scenes like that in this film. And it, the action set pieces, like I said, are really intense. Um, now, where I have problems with this movie, I guess what, that's mainly what I could say about the things I liked about the movie was the acting and the action set pieces. And the main problems with this movie are, one, it is very cheesy dialogue throughout this movie, uh, especially towards the end. And I was like, nobody would ever fucking say that. <laughs> like, it, it is really cheesy American, pro-America um, dialogue. And not as much, as not as bad as, like, uh, American Sniper was. But it's, there's some eye-rolling, groan-worthy dialogue in this film. Um, not as, like I said, not, this is not as badly written as a lot of Michael Bay films, so I'll give him that. Um... Especially the Transformer movies. I keep going back to those. I hate keep comparing to those. Um, also, I'm pretty certain... I, I it, This has been proven that a lot of this shit was... Even though it's based off a true story... That a lot of this shit was fabricated. You could, I could even tell from watching the movie. I'm like, I'm pretty certain it didn't go down this way. Uh, like, like I said, the movie is very anti-CIA and really uh, criticizes the CIA by the end of this movie more than anybody. Even though this movie isn't saying, or it keeps saying, they keep saying, ah, this movie is not trying to be all political and try to, and all that stuff, trying to get into the politics of the whole situation. It kind of does, but not as bad as I thought it would. Um, it, like I said, more attacks the CIA and what they did, and, or lack of what they did, and, uh, and, and some of what the government, you know, they, like, they tried to claim that they called, uh, from what I've heard, that they tried to claim, the, or they claimed in the movie that they tried to call an air attack, and they, nobody came. Apparently, from accounts, that didn't really happen. Um... And, uh, what, what was the other one? I forget where... I don't know. There was, a, there was a bunch of stuff. I'm sure more and more will come out, but I am pretty certain. I, I'm not trying to get into the politics of this whole situation. I mean, it's... I don't know what happened. I, I Many people don't know what happened. Even even the fucking Republicans don't know what happened. I, it's, it's a lot of he said, she said what happened down there. Um, if... Some of the stuff that this happens in this happened in this movie did happen this way. I can understand why Republicans and military or, or people are pissed in Congress. I can, but if a lot of this shit is fabricated, then I'm like, okay, come on. So I don't know. It's like one of those. Um, also, this movie has a lot of Michael Bay isms. It wouldn't be a Michael Bay film. It, this is this is a movie right up his goddamn alley because just gives him a chance to. Do so much explosions, lots and lots of explosions, like any Michael Bay film. And also, there's a great scene where I was like, "Oh God, that's just a Michael Bayism right there," uh, where a guy a bomb's being dropped on a roof, and a guy's walking in slow mo. It's like it's it's it is a pretty cool scene, but it's David. I'm like, "Oh, geez, there's Michael Bay for you." 
And, and, like, and everybody knows about there's always a scene where get characters running in slow motion. Like, while bombs or explosions are going off in the background. It's like, it's a Michael Bay-ism. Um, like, I see... And then, like, I'm trying to think of something else. There's something else I forget. I'm sure now that when I'm done with the review, I'll remember. But this movie wasn't that bad. I it is a long sit. I uh, will say that uh, it does feel a little bit two and a half hours. And like I thought, I was like an hour into this movie, and I was still only only had forty, only been in there for forty minutes. I'm like, damn. Uh, it's like I thought I'd been there longer, um, but it's still not a bad film. Um, I, I enjoyed it uh, for the most part. Um, for a Michael Bay film, this is probably his best film in the years. Like I said, uh, as far as trailers go, I got. Give me one second. I got, uh, please stand by. Uh, Ten Cloverfield Lane. Um, this trailer, I'm sure, is not secret. It was supposed to be a secret, but pretty much after the first screening of 13 Hours, I heard about this trailer uh, before I uh, went to the theater, long before I went to the theater. Uh, this is supposedly a sequel to Cloverfield, which it is kind of funny, everybody like getting all excited about this trailer and everything else, and I'm like, does... Anybody not forget, does everybody kind of forget that while everybody loved the trailer for Cloverfield when it first came out, the reception to Cloverfield wasn't that great in the first place? I didn't mind Cloverfield. It wasn't that bad, but I don't, wasn't that crazy about it. Like, and this is like, I, I actually give a point. It's like, th th this movie's not going to be found footage. It's not John Goodman. Uh, Mary Elizabeth uh, Winstead, who's a decent actress, uh, where apparently he uh, takes her into a bomb shelter or whatever, and he keeps her down there for years or years and tells her that if she goes uh, back onto the earth, uh, onto the surface of uh, that, something will attack her or something. I don't know. It was a pretty decent trailer. I give them that. Um, I liked the trailer. I was interested in where, to, like, what's going on. I, I'll give them points. I was like, all right, I'm kind of interested in where, where, what's going on with this movie. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Um, what does this have to do with uh, uh, Clover or Cloverfield? I have no idea. Um, it does it have anything to do with Cloverfield? I don't know. I think. I think. <laughs> I love how. If you watch the trailer, it just says, like, when it shows the title, it says Cloverfield. And then it slowly shows 10 Lane. So it's 10 Cloverfield Lane. So they're, like, you know, banking on people remembering Cloverfield, which came out in 2007. Um, I don't know how many people really remember that movie that much, but whatever. Uh, what else? Oh, Star Trek Beyond. I, got the, I finally got the trailer for that. Um... I kind of liked this trailer. It was a little bit different from any Star Trek trailer I've ever seen. Um, it was playing Beastie Boys Sabotage. That was funny. I brought a smile to my face. It's like, alright, this is different from any trailer of a Star Trek movie. I have no idea what's going on. Um, they're stuck on a planet, it looks like, or something like that. And they have no ship or barely have any crew or something like that. And that's all I can kind of guess. Um... Eh. Ah, uh, whatever. Um, I I liked I liked the new Star Trek movies. I never really got to Star Trek uh, before then. Uh, I'll give like I'll give credit to the new ones. It kind of made me a fan of Star Trek. Um, even though I wasn't a big fan of Star Trek in the Darkness, I did like the first Star Trek. I mean, I did like Star Trek in the Darkness until the last half of the movie uh, when it decided to be a remake of Wrath of Khan. And the last trailer I got was Money Monster. This looks kind of good. Um, it's George Clooney and Julia Roberts, where George Clooney's playing uh, basically uh, a characterization of that Mad Money guy, uh, who you know, a, a person, a, a uh, disgruntled uh, viewer or whatever, 
comes on to the set with a uh, gun and a, a bomb strapped to his chest and he's threatened to kill everybody uh, on live TV and it looks really good. Um, that actually looks really, really good. I'm interested. I, I, it, like, it looks, it's being directed by Jodie Foster, which kind of intrigues me. Um, I was like, alright, I'll check that out. It doesn't look that bad. It looks like one of those movies that has a heavy message about greed, American greed, about the Wall Street, people on Wall Street. I'm like, how many movies have we seen those, like those in the past few uh, years? Um, well, we'll see. Um, that's as far as trailers go. I'll be back later this week. Um, or maybe like uh, later next week, or earlier next week, uh, with, uh, I guess the Danish girls finally come to my theater. So I will be doing a review for that finally. Um, and until then I will talk to you guys later.